Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Pacific Inlet Logging. Now, you may remember at the end of last week, we accidentally drove our tree harvester straight into the lake. Technically, it wasn't our tree harvester, it belonged to the dealership. Now, they had insurance ready for that sort of thing. However, um, you know, we still had to, we ended up paying some money for it. And, yeah, I thought that it would be all right. I genuinely did. I genuinely thought that we'd be okay and that um, we, we could sort of carry on because we got another one and and, and then we, we, we carried on with what we were doing. And you may notice a lack of tree harvest. You may notice a lack of anything here at the moment. And you may also notice that the money is, you know, we, we've lost, uh, we've lost $20,000. Well, long story short, uh... We, we've we've had some um, measures put in place against us. We are no longer allowed to lease any machinery whatsoever. We are not allowed to lease anything unless we can buy it outright. We can't use it. And uh, yeah, on top of that, the prices for everything have dropped. Right, prices are now a lot lower than they used to be, which means that we're going to get less for our timber. We were getting roughly three grand per tree that we cut up and uh, and fed into the lake. We ain't going to be getting that kind of price anymore. I don't know what we're going to be getting because I haven't actually checked it yet, but it's a lot less than it was. So, things have gone from bad to worse. Um, yeah, we, we, we sort of, it looked like, you know, we had the tree harvester. It looked like we were going to get through this patch of trees pretty quickly. Things were looking great, but now not so much. So, what have we got? We've got a chainsaw. That's all we've got. We don't have anything else. And we've got 15 grand. Okay, 15,000. We could, if we wanted to, we, we could get a tractor. Um, actually, I'm not even sure what tractor we can get with 15 grand. They've, they've got a number of tractors here. This dealership, despite being in the middle of nowhere, we could get that one. It doesn't come with a um, design. No, we can't get a, um, a front loader on that. Um, we've got yeah, we could just about stretch to an international harvester there. Front loader attachment for Cat 3 front loaders. Giant front loader. Uh, with the front loader attachment, it goes out of our price range. So we can't really get that one. Uh, we got a John Deere here for 12000 but we can't really put anything with it. And, I mean, the, the, problem, the problem lies in the fact that all of these tractors that we've got here they're, they're just out of our price range at the moment they're only a little bit out of our price range but they are out of our price range i don't think there is any track oh hang on what about that universal right there see and with front loader attachment we could get that one we could get a universal right there with front loader attachment and we could do it so then if we go here and we have a look at the front loaders at uh, 5400 we could just about stretch to that but i don't think we can get the log fork as well is the log for, oh no, 800. Yeah, we could just about do it. However, the other thing that I got last week um, was, you know, everybody, I was surprised at just how popular this series is, you know, it seemed to be. So many of you, you really seem to like the idea for this series and you really seem to like the actual episodes that I've done so far. Um, and I, I was quite surprised at just how enthusiastic a lot of you were about this series and how much you seem to like the idea of it. This is absolutely brilliant. I love this. Um, I, I really like that you are this enthusiastic about it and you do seem to like it. However, nobody actually said they were disappointed. But the episode two and episode three, I got an overwhelming sense of disappointment that I was progressing fast and I was leasing the machinery and stuff like that. I genuinely got the impression that you were all a little bit disappointed with me for doing that. And so I've sort of taken this on board and I have, we're going to have a rule where we don't lease anything. There's no leasing at all. And we're also, I've changed the game. I modified the XML to change it to hard mode instead of normal mode. So we get less for our, it's going to take more to be, to be able to work our way up. So front loader attachment there. Yes. Or front weight. So we can have either there. I think the Valtra 602, because Valtra was originally designed as forestry equipment, if I remember correctly. Um, so I think that we'll go for a Valtra 602 when we can get to it. We've got um, four-wheel drive front and rear twins. Okay, that is... I'm liking some of this. Two-wheel drive. 
Four-wheel drive front and rear twins. I'm liking this idea. I really do. And, and we could afford that. But no, we're not doing that. Not at the moment. There is something else that we're going to do first. And I don't actually remember. Where, where was it? It was, was it under animals? Um, the, the, the biggest request that I had last week was for the pony. Just to try it out. Now, we can't actually drag logs along the ground with the pony, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, we, we can get ourselves ponies. We've got red, brown, brown, or black. I'm going for the red, brown one. We're going to buy ourselves a little horse right there. And we're going to get a wooden cart to go with it. We can have a standard. We can have only platform. Now, I'm not sure which one would be best for us. Thinking standard with the sides. Although, maybe the platform. We'll try platform for now. We'll see how this works out. Okay, there we go. And now we've got the bale, the pony feed. Uh, they, they do both the same. Uh, pony food in a bag. Um, alternative to the feed bag. So we can have either or of these, really. So that's 200 litres there and that's 50 litres there. Um, we do need the water as well. And we need the hay rack. Hay is needed to increase the performance. And then we've got to have the water trough right there. Now, I'm not sure how whether or not those had to be filled up i don't remember if they needed to be filled up or not i genuinely don't remember about that so we're just going to go with what we got for a minute and then we'll see about getting a bit more for the pony because at the moment it's not it doesn't need anything i think you go near the the hay bales to fill up so look at the moment it's got um it's got water and it's got um right we'll do that so I want to back this one up to our cart over here. But yeah, this was the single most requested item last week. And I did get the a, like a really overwhelming sense of disappointment that I wasn't doing this. So I decided, yeah, I will do this. I will use this one, um, even if it's just for one episode. And also, I've made it a lot harder. It's a lot harder now for me to... It's going to be harder for me to do anything in this game because, one, I cannot lease machinery. I've, I've eliminated... Well, I haven't actually removed the ability from the game. I'm just saying I can't lease anything for you. And also, we've got... Um, I've, I've switched over to hard mode. So, it's, it's going to be much more of a challenge. And I'm hoping that this is the sort of thing that you were all after. I get the impression that this is the kind of thing that you wanted. So, we will see. Is this... Let me know in the comments section, is this what you were after? Is this what you wanted to see? A uh, bit more of a, a challenge here. So I'm going to try and take this tree down here. Um, we do have the old voucher tractor available. So we're going to do a bit with the horse and cart and a bit by hand. And then I am switching over to the voucher tractor. We'll have that old tractor and we use that one. So we've got some second-hand tractors that we're going to be using. Um, and sort of going through it like that. So first up, let me grab that wedge there, if I can. Um, this is a problem. Okay, I, I, I can't actually get it. Come out! Come out! I need to... There we go. Right, I got the wedge. That's the first bit that's going on board here. Oop. It, it will go on board. There. Now it has gone on board. We've got that one on there. Next, we want to start cutting this up. And for those of you who were asking, why am I making sawdust? It's a mod. It's called the Sawdust Mod. Um, it's on the Mod Hub. Just go and search it up. Um, you, there isn't actually a search function in-game, but if you go to the website and you search on the website, in the mod section on the website, you can at least find where it is on the Mod Hub. So that then you can go in-game and it's a bit easier to look for it. The, that's the way that I do it. If I can't find it, um, I'll go. I'll search it up like that instead, and it does work fairly well. Right, we'll chop that one off there. I'm going to split this one in half again once I've done this. I did have a request in the comments section somewhere for doing some of this as time lapse. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing just regular gameplay. Um, yes, I know that it's slow, and um, that was the whole point of this series. This is, this is just going to be slow-paced gameplay. Um, I'm not time-lapsing it to speed up the video because um, it does actually take... It's 
it takes longer for me to edit when I time lapse stuff because I've got to find the right music and I've got to make sure I include the links for the music in the comment section. And not everybody likes time lapse. Um, there's quite a lot of you that watch my regular Let's Plays that don't enjoy time lapse at all. Um, and yeah, I appreciate that there are some of you that like both of them. Um, some of you much prefer the time lapse over the others, and you kind of watch the regular Let's Plays as a stopgap between time lapses. Um, but no, I don't have any plans to time lapse this material. And I occasionally, on some of the episodes for the other Let's Plays, um, I will time lapse a little bit, but I don't have any plans to do any in this series at all. So sorry to disappoint those people who do want time lapse. Um, but um, no, it, it's, it's not going to happen this time. Right. I'm going to carefully pull that one out, he says, flinging it around. This, this is what's going to happen, is I'm going to really like start throwing stuff around now. So let, let's, let's try and do this a little bit more slowly. We're going to bring that one back there, drop it down there. And then I'm going to take this one. I've just, I, I know how I can do this. I know I can do this to sort of make this work a little bit better. If I drop that one down there a minute, I'm going to put a couple more logs on here if I can. There, like that. Drop you down there. And we get another one here. And put you on as well. And then... Yeah, see? Some of these, they're, they're, they're sort of, they're quite long. And they're not easy to install onto the onto the bed of the um the cart but we'll get them there we will put these onto the cart so what i can do now actually is i can bring this one along here if i go up there like that i can put one strap on there i've actually got i think on this cart it's got one two three it's four straps all together those logs are held in place now i don't need to worry about them in the slightest i can bring this one over here and i'm going to cut this one in half because otherwise it's going to be too big it's going to be too long to go across the whole thing I'll chop that one there and then what I found when I was using this horse and cart in uh, under the hill on um, uh, what is what's his name um, remember his name now Snickerdoo on Snickerdoo's uh, the, the map that uh, Snickerdoo's um, a close uh, friend I think um, made might be i think it's family maybe maybe even a family member but anyway the, the one uh, that i did the under the hill map that is from um you know snickerdoo's channel is sort of mostly known for this where the map originated from when i was on there i was using the pony on there and i did find that loading it you had to be careful uh with the with, you had to keep like putting the straps on because the otherwise the timber had a tendency to sort of wander its way out the back of the cart which was a little bit annoying a bit frustrating Overall, though, I really did like the cart. I, I got on well with it, and I thought it was quite cool. And it really did fit his map really well. It, it, it fit absolutely perfectly, in fact. So there we go. We've got a huge, great big piece on there. So what I'll do now... See it's moving? See those two bits are moving there? So I'm going to put that one on there like that. Just going to put that in place, and I'll take that one off. And then I'll put that one back on like that. And that should... There... I'm actually going to remove that one as well and just see what happened there. We'll do that. See, they, they slide around. They're actually gliding all over the place. Unless I physically stop them by putting the strap down, it, it absolutely it will just keep gliding everywhere. Right, let's go up through here all the way up to the very top. There we go. And back down again and then up this way. There. There we go. Took a bit off the other tree as well. That's fine. And right now, where do I? Where am I going to cut from here? I think we want to cut sort of like that. Actually, I want to go the other side of this one so that I can angle it back. It wants to angle back that way, like that. There and in like that. We chop that one off, and then we got one a bit further up above us to chop off. And then we've got a big trunk that's left, and that's the bit that we're going to sort of just leave here. I'm not going to try and pick that one up just yet. We'll leave that ready for the tractor once we've got a tractor in place. So, steady. Drop that onto my head. I don't really want to do that. Now, can I fit this one onto our cart without causing myself any problems? I can. Just. There. Okay, we'll put that one onto there. And then we go back over this way. I want to just tidy up these branches a minute. Because we did find, in the end, that it was actually, it was worth tidying the branches up. 
um, the amount of money that we got and the difference in it. And now that we're on hard mode, it's definitely going to be worth taking the time to tidy branches up. So I want to cut that one across there. And then I do want to do another cut on across the, the Y point on there. Oops, steady. There we go. Right. Uh, bring that one down there. Um, it was, yeah, it, with, with this being on hard mode now, I think that we are, you know, making money is going to be much more of a struggle. And it's going to take us quite a long time before we get back to the point where we can get Tree Harvester. The I did get a request to use the Sampo Rosenloo um, Tree Harvester. Now, the thing with that one is, it's you know, I'm sure it's great and all, but uh, quite frankly, it's utterly useless. Um, because it won't go around the big trees. It only does the small trees. There's a couple of trees, I think, over the other end of this field that it would actually fit. But for the most part, the Sampo Rosenloo one, you, you can't use it. It doesn't do anything. Um, the, the big problem, that is like the big problem with it, is that it doesn't, um, you, you can't get the thing to cut. It won't grip around the trees. You, you, it's very small trees only. And the number of times that you've got really small trees that you want to cut are fairly limited. Mostly you want to be cutting big trees. And so that's, it, it does make it a bit of a nuisance. Now, I'll take that off there and quickly clip on another one. I think that branch there is um, not quite in place there. So if I do that one again, there we go. That's holding all of them in. I've got one more cut that I want to take off of this one, which is going to be about there, I think. And that's the last of it off of this tree. I've got not many more of these trees that we actually want to take down. There's a couple, I think. There's certainly one. I can see one just over away from us there. So I put that one down there and I'm going to take this one off and then put that over again. And now this time we're going to put the rest of the straps on like that and one there. So we've got all the straps on there holding that down in place. That one there is going to wait for a tractor. We've got this tree here. I got another one there and 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 I'm gonna leave that one those there that little avenue going in we're gonna leave so um, yeah, there's actually more here than I thought so there's one two three and four five more of those trees to take down before we're done with cutting them up I don't think I really want to do all of that with just the chainsaw I'm thinking that we may switch over to the tractor sooner rather than later one other thing that was requested which i am going to do was to use this one and uh, no i'm not going to i'm going to lease this one so that the costs are fairly small um and it doesn't sort of affect the actual gameplay reason being is yeah few people wonder well uh, I, you know i honestly i don't know if it was a few people or just one person but um yeah Pete, I, it was requested that I use this one here. There we go. We need to... Uh, pitch his mouse button up like that. Basically, just use this one in order to... I need to do that there. And then I can... Oh, no. Uh, I'm trying to... Right, move, turn is A and D. So the idea was that I take an aerial photo of our progress. And i got to say, I do particularly like the idea of taking an aerial photo of our progress. Each week. And this was, the idea was I'm supposed to do this each week. So I'm hoping that it's going to stop sort of moving around very much at the moment. And that's a bit too high. I can turn it round a little bit. There's our main progress there. I'll try and lower down again. And so that's, gonna, that's giving us an aerial view of our progress, of what we've done so far. We've got the horse over there. And if I can turn round sort of like that. I mean, ideally, you want kind of roughly the, the same sort of angle each time. But we're, we're going to struggle to get that. So I'll bring this over this way. 
And we'll try and stop there. It, it's slowing down a bit. There. And if I lower down, that's giving us a bit of an idea of our angle right there. Yeah, our angle, our progress. So there, we've got an we've got an aerial shot at the beginning of the week, and I would try and get in an aerial shot at the beginning of each week so that it's something that you can have a look at. Um, but that's what we've got so far, and it's giving a good idea of it. The quickest way to get this thing down is to just do that. Now I don't remember. Oh yeah, it does. It drops straight down through the map. So we can just... Actually, what we do now... What I well, what I was doing previously when I was using this one... Is I go to that and then I simply reset it. And that will go and put it next to the shop. So then we can ignore it now until the end of the week. And that will stay on lease. And we won't do anything else with it. So we've got a load of timber here. And we can either bring it to the edge of the lake over here. And we can just sling it in. Or we can back it up onto the ramp. I'm going to bring it just to here. Just to this point here, and we're going to chuck it into the lake. So we've got to back this one up. Like this. Up to there. There we go. Right, now I climb off. And there is our load of timber. I quite like this. I, I actually, I like the idea of doing this. Um, and I'm very interested in hearing your feedback about my ideas for... Changing this all now to hard mode, so it's, it's definitely going to take a lot longer to do anything. There we go. Right, now the timber is all moving. This is this is going to be interesting. So I'll bring that one over there. And what do we get for one of those? $38. Right, now all of the branches previously, I think we got around about $1,500 for them. 84 for that one. Uh, this is... 22. Right, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to struggle. Right, um, the, the biggest branch is there, which I'll get him in a minute. That's 237 for that one. That's much better. Let's try slinging that in there a minute. We've got $8. So the big piece that was. We're going to get $8.57. What about the wedge? The wedge is going to be interesting because we were getting anywhere from $3 to $11 for the wedge. I wonder what we're going to get now. So there is the wedge. Is it even going to register? Can it give us anything? Two dollars. And... Chuck that one in there. Seventy-seven. Yeah, we've... It's, it's really made a difference. We had two hundred dollars for one of them, but... Um, <laughs> we have got an awful lot less than we had previously. We, we've got a huge amount less. Let's go and have a look in here. So we've got, in the way of front loaders, uh, the one particular front loader that I'm looking at is the Valtra one here. We've got a, um, it's just the front loader attachment. That's a thousand. And then we could have one of the man ones. I don't really want one of those. Um, I'm sort of thinking that the fork with grapple could be a good one if it'll fit. But I don't even know if it'll go on there. Um... But the old, an old voucher tractor alongside one of these. And see, those are hideously expensive. Very, very expensive right there. We've got the buyer belts one there, which has got the, the double grapple. We've got the original log, the stole log fork here for $800. That might actually be the best one. That stole log fork there alongside this voucher one here. So that's $1,800 there. And then our tractor over here, the voucher tractor, that's five thousand five hundred, which means that we can afford it. We can put the, we can put that on there. Wheel setup. I want four wheel drive and rear twins. Four wheel drive. Rear twins. Four wheel drive front and rear twins. Yeah, I think we should go with twins all the way through. That's an extra two thousand three hundred. So it is expensive. I do that there. That puts me all the way up to sixty six horsepower. There's an extra thousand. That's 9,600 plus what I need for... all Front fenders, standard. Uh, I'll put the front fenders on. It's a shame it doesn't have the forestry grill over it. That's the only thing that I find a little bit disappointing about this. But we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to buy it. I'll buy that one right there. And I'll back out of there. And then I need to go back and back again. And we need to go to the front loaders. And in here, we want the 
log fork there which I want to change to orange to match the... It's not going to be the, like the best match, but it is going to be a slight match. And then we go to this one all the way down here, down at the end. We want that one there, and we want to buy that one as well. So we've, we've still got four grand left. Unfortunately, four grand is not enough to buy the other item that I want and will desperately need, which is probably one of the most important items that we can get at this point, and that is that one. 4,500. It's actually not far off. If we can get that one as well, we are well on our way to being able to do something useful. So, take our horse, and I'm thinking I might go and cut one more tree down with the horse, and we'll use this. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do an episode with the horse, and, and then I might actually sell the horse back afterwards, because um, I, I don't really want to spend all of my time just cutting up um, stuff with the... the using the horse and cart um, we have earned ourselves a little bit and we can you know life is mechanized these days this is this is more a flavor item than anything else so life is mechanized so I think that we will we'll do one more with this and then we will sell it back um, so we've done a nod towards the using the horse and cart and then we will um, go towards mechanization which is what I'd like to do anyway um, so we'll cut that one through there and We'll do exactly the same. We'll, we'll chop off the branches. We'll put them together as quickly as we can. And we'll stick them all onto the back of that horse and cart. So there we go. Over you go. We've got the wedge right there. If I can take that one out. The ever important wedge. We must not forget the wedge. That one goes right on there first. And then we can go out here with our chainsaw. And we can start slicing. So I want to clear off. All of these branches first. I go all the way up through. There we go. I've done out that side. And I come in around there. And oh, a few over this side here. And it's, actually, it's all of that one, isn't it? There. Yep. And then down here as well. There we go. That's all out. And then back this one. We go. Go on. Where is it? There it is. Uh, up that way. Now where? Gotta be somewhere I can... Oh, hang on. Nope. And up through there. I'm getting better at this. I'm, I'm slowly getting... Yeah, you know, with, with removing all of the branches, it, it takes... It's surprising just how difficult it can be to remove all the branches. I think we'll leave the rest of them for a minute, because I'll cut this one off down here first. So I want to just crouch down there and take that one off in close to the trunk. So it's neat and tidy. We'll hack that one off. And then we can start working our way up. So if I get this one off here first, I want to take you down there. Then that big branch there, I actually want to cut that one in half. Cut this one here, and then... Well, actually, that one can cut down this way. So I'll go... Bring that one back a little bit. Bring it round. There we go. We'll cut that one off of there. And then the next one, I'll also cut at the next junction. This one here, I do want to cut this one in half, or I'm not going to be able to fit it onto the trailer. To the trailer, onto the cart, the, the horse's cart. There, we cut that one. And then back here, we go and we cut that one down there, like that. $4,238 at the moment. So when we sell this next tree, just the, the branches off this next tree, interested to see what we get with it. Uh, the other trees, what we were doing, was we was cutting the tree down and then dragging the whole tree all the way over and then cutting it up close to the lake. I'm wondering if the Valtra has even got the power to be able to do that because this, um, you know, the, the trees are quite heavy, aren't they? So it might be that the Valtra is not able to drag the tree that kind of distance. I also got severely reprimanded by a few of you for the way that I was using the winch in last week's episode. So uh, I do apologise for that. I've... I've do you really think that I know how? To, I did say that I don't have any forestry experience. I wouldn't have a clue how to use a winch. Apparently, I was not using it correctly. Though. I was. Um, I. You need to. So what? What I need to be doing is I need to be driving, pulling the winch all the way in first. I shouldn't be driving along with the lead out at all. And that's the first mistake that I was making. I was driving along with the lead out. And it, I shouldn't be doing that at all. Not not even a little bit. I should bring the lead all the way in, right up to the very... Um, so it's tight to the machine. 
so that the tree trunk is... I need to put the blade down on the ground and then pull the, um, pull the winch all the way in so that the base of the tree trunk goes up tight to the blade. Once it's reached the base of the blade, then I'm supposed to pick the blade up off the ground, thus raising the um, tree trunk, the, the back of the tree trunk, off the ground, and then proceed to drive um, so that it's all held in tight. So I'll, make, I'll try to do that this time. I'll try to make sure that I get this right because um, I would like to be able to at least do it a few times the, the correct way. I may not do it every time. I may also, you know, ride around like a lunatic with the tree sort of sliding and trailing around behind me. Um, and for that, I make no apology. But um, I am going to try at least a few times to get it correct. Let's bring that one back over there and just nudge you forward a bit. Right, it's time to put the strap on now. Put that one onto there. That's going to hold those in place while we get another layer of um, timber on. I've got that one there. This this is the one here that will get us a couple hundred dollars, I think. So I'll drop that one into there. If I can load it onto the thing here carefully. Did you notice that when I dropped that on, the horse sort of um, lifted its head a bit? It jumped a little bit. I'm wondering if that's like an actual thing with this horse. Right, that's not... Oh, yes, it is. That's, that is secured. It has secured. I thought that the, it hadn't secured it. It just looked like it because of the way the, the thing was sitting. And I'm going to bring this one in this side like that. Lower that in there like that. And then, well, that that is probably a bit much for that poor horse. On the outside of the bar there, it should be all right. If I do that there. See, on the outside there, it should be okay because it's not going to interfere with the horse. It's if it goes on the inside and rubs against the horse's flank. That's going to really uh, agitate the horse and it, it's very likely going to spook it as well. Dep well, it does depend on the horse. Some horses are apt to get a little bit spooked by something like that and others are, are not going to be too bothered. So it does, it does greatly depend on the horse and how quiet it is. But you can't really blame it for getting spooked by something poking at its flank all the time. So we'll cut that one right through there. And then another cut down the center of those two there to separate them out. And then there's, I think, one more cut on the actual main branch. And we're done. We've got our second tree loaded up on the horse and cart, ready to roll. So put that one up onto there. Drop you down onto there. And we've got another bit here. Don't drop you into the lake. I cannot afford, at this point, to be throwing timber away. It's rather expensive, I've noticed now. Uh, well, no, it's th that's the problem. It's not expensive. The problem is that all of this timber is not worth very much money at all. So we're um, it, it, it's going to be more difficult for us to make any kind of cash at all. Bring that one, I'd say, around here somewhere. There we go. We'll chop that one through there. And we get a face full of sawdust, which I can tell you from real life experience is not as much fun as it seems. Standing where the chainsaw can spray a load into your face. I mean, yes, I did have a proper visor on, a, chainsaw, a proper chainsaw helmet with the face visor and everything. Um, as well as actual goggles. But sometimes when you're doing chainsaw work on trees, it's not always possible to stand so that you're clear of all of the the um the, the bits being sort of flung up um not always i mean you'd like it to be and in an ideal world it should be but it's not always possible so i have occasionally done a little bit of chainsaw i haven't done forestry work on any large scale but i've done i've done you know felled my fair share of trees that sort of thing so i i, I have done enough to sort of know how to use a chainsaw and know to make sure that you do have chainsaw leggings on because even the best person with a chainsaw could make a mistake and could slip and it only takes one tiny slip with a chainsaw to cut your leg and chainsaws can remove it's something utterly obscene um i honestly i can't remember now i think it's something like 20 pounds of flesh per set no is it it's not 20 pounds, it's, it's 5 pounds of flesh per second. Something along those lines. I mean, you know, you're talking the majority of your... If you're running a chainsaw along your leg, you could remove the majority of the flesh on your leg in under a second. Right? It really does strip it back that fast. 
And so in order to not have that happen to you, you wear chainsaw leggings. And chainsaw leggings are absolutely wonderful. They are made of a Kevlar type material that if the chainsaw touches them, it's only got to just touch them. It instantly, like the, the chainsaw blade just explodes in white. Or at least the ones that I had um, are in white. And I've never actually seen it happen myself. I've only seen the cut on it where someone else had um, used the chainsaw leggings I normally used. Um, and then there was a cut in them where someone had uh, touched the chainsaw to the leggings. And so then there was a little white line on them. And the chainsaw blade becomes absolutely choked with this white stuff um, and stops it from cutting. And it saved that man's leg. That man is still walking around with both of his legs because he had those leggings on. Um, and I would say absolutely categorically without any question, never ever use a chainsaw unless you've got chainsaw leggings on. Steel toe cap boots, that sort of thing as well. Um, but I would say that even if you forego all other safety gear... Well, number one, you're an absolute moron. I'm going to say that now. I don't care who it offends. I don't care if it upsets you. If you're not using proper safety gear when you're using a chainsaw, you're a moron. Um, now, gloves. Gloves are debatable. Gloves are actually a debatable item because some people prefer not to use gloves because they um, give you a better grip. Other people will have a glove on one hand and not on the other hand. In, for the same reason. Me, personally, I use a thinner type of glove, um, and I use gloves on both hands. That's entirely down to personal preference. Um, there are recommended guidelines for both uh, one glove only and two gloves as to which you should use. Uh, personally, I prefer two gloves of a thinner type that will protect against touching the chainsaw blade. But if your hand goes near a chainsaw blade, you have already done something fairly wrong already. Okay, Your hand shouldn't be going anywhere near it. Your leg is much more likely to come into contact with the chainsaw blade, but even then, it shouldn't be. You should be operating safe practices, so it shouldn't. But, like I said, things do happen from time to time. Uh, the leggings, you put those on, it doesn't matter how gently or hard you whack that chainsaw blade against your leg. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to get a bruise, right? You're not going to end up losing your leg. If you don't have chainsaw um, leggings on, and you touch your leg with the chainsaw blade, you could end up very easily. If you touch it lightly, you'll remove a big chunk of your leg. It's incredibly dangerous. Don't use a chainsaw without chainsaw leggings on. And I, I've heard one person who said that the reason he doesn't use chainsaw leggings is because if he does touch the chainsaw leggings with the blade, it chokes the blade up and it takes him absolutely hours and hours to remove the stuff from the blade. Are you serious right now? I mean, are you actually being serious? And apparently he was. Um, that that was his reason, because it would take too long. Uh, what are you going to do if you chop your own leg off? I, I, yeah, I, 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 I honestly, I couldn't believe it. But um, that was his reason for not using a chainsaw. Um, chainsaw leggings was it would take too long if he got choked up. Um, I would rather have the blade choked up and then have to spend an hour picking all the stuff off. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. I'd rather spend an hour picking all the stuff off than I would have the chainsaw blade um, go into my leg. Um, quite frankly, this, you know, definitely the, the lesser of the two evils, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then you want hearing protection and you want eye face protection. You'll often see people using chainsaws have got a helmet. Um, hard hat is a good idea in case you drop a branch on your head. That's an optional one. It does depend on what you're doing. Um, I always prefer to use a chainsaw helmet. Um, it has built-in ear protection and it has a face visor as well. I put goggles on underneath that because the smaller chips, they can also be a bit of a nuisance. And the visor itself is just alone is not really enough. So you do want a little bit more than just the visor. Um, the visor itself is brilliant because it protects your whole face from the larger chips being blown against your face. Uh, quite frankly, that does get a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if, you, if you do get a face full of those chips, uh, they are coming off that chainsaw blade at quite a high speed, and it's not really something you want. So if, if, if at all possible, it's a good idea to try to avoid it by having a chainsaw helmet. If you're going to tell me that you can't 
afford the chainsaw helmet, the chainsaw leggings, um, then you shouldn't be operating the chainsaw in the first place. Um, I, I don't care if you can't afford it. Find a way to lease it. Borrow them. Do whatever you can do. If you're using a chainsaw without using chainsaw leggings and some kind of eye and hearing protection, you are a moron. And I'm going to say it again. I don't care how many people get upset by this in the comments section. If you're using a chainsaw without leggings, you are a moron. I know one person who only ha- I know a person- Seriously? 210 in sold wood from that one right there. That's it. We just got 210 for that one entire branch. That's terrible. I know a person who only has one leg now because of a really bad injury he picked up from a chainsaw. I know other people who have very bad scars on their legs because they didn't use chainsaw leggings. If you're using a chainsaw without leggings, you're a moron. It's as simple as that. Right? You just don't do it. If you choose to do that, you, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to back down from this one. I, you know, I'm probably going to have somebody say that they do it in the comment section. Well, yeah, good for you. Not good for you. That's, it's, it's terrible. It's awful. Don't use chainsaw without your leggings on. I mean, what's the matter with you? The number of times that I've seen an experienced person on a chainsaw have a branch just slip, just move a tiny bit. It's only got to move the tiniest bit in the wrong direction, and you know it, it it'll slip, and it, it slips quite a lot. It's, it just move ever so slightly in the wrong direction, and then you, you're done. Right? That's it. Um, chainsaw get jammed it gets knocked it gets uh, you know you, you get knocked over uh with trees and you got to remember i'm not i'm not a person with a lot of forestry experience well i don't have any real forestry experience all i've got is just cutting a bit of timber in a field you know cut the odd tree down on the edge of the field for winter wood supply and the number of times you see the chainsaw move and then you also take into account how fast it will remove the flesh and bone from your leg if it touches. It's only got to touch you. Literally, it's just got to touch you. And it will strip the flesh away from you in seconds. Less than seconds. Less than a second. And you've removed such a massive chunk of your leg that you will never walk again properly. Right? That's it. It's less than a second. The slightest touch and your life has been changed forever because you didn't wear leggings. If you'd worn leggings, that slightest touch, all that's going to do is inconvenience you for an hour. I would rather have an inconvenient couple of hours picking the white stuff out of the chain. I mean, half the time the, the, the chain is rendered useless. It does depend on the type of Kevlar that you're using. Don't, don't drop out. Um, yeah, it, it does depend a bit on the type of Kevlar that you're using, but um, sometimes the, um, the chain is rendered completely useless you can't you can't really use the chainsaw blade after that and you've got to buy a new chain wouldn't you rather buy a new chain than have your leg lost and gone we are 164 dollars for that as well why i think i left those two pieces too long i think that was the problem i, I think i left them too long i think i should have cut them in half um and that's why we got less for those two pieces of timber that we put in 164 we got for that Anyway, there we go. I've probably upset somebody with today's episode. And I hope I haven't upset um, anybody too much. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed the episode. So if you have, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And next time, what we're going to do is we now have enough money to go and do this bit. And I will stop calling people morons in the next episode, I promise. I won't do that again. I've, I've said my piece. Um, I'm not going to do it. It's just because I seen a picture of a chainsaw injury um, a day or two ago, and it's um, yeah, I, I, it's it's not pleasant. Uh, so please don't be another statistic. That's all. I'm just asking you, please. I'm begging you, don't be another statistic. Just I I don't want to be reading messages about how you didn't put the the leggings on and now you've only got one leg, um, or worse, you know. You know, there's even worse injuries to get. I, I don't want you to be one of those people. Um, do not be a statistic. So, yeah, I will stop I, I, I will stop the whole morbid thing in our next episode. We're going to go and get that um, attachment, and I'm going to try and use it properly this time. We'll cut down another tree over the other end, and we'll drag that one back. 
we'll cut that one up over here and we'll sling it into the water and we'll see what we get for it and i'll also cut the main log in half this time and we'll see if that gives us a little bit more and then what we'll probably do is we'll probably start cutting down some of these and dragging these back towards the water because i think that we could get a decent bit of cash from those just by cutting them up by hand uh what we're going to do next, after we've got that one and sort of got that one back, uh, we do actually want to get the tipper back. Uh, the, you know the one, that the, the whole Joskin thing that we had back here? Where is it? Where is it? Where There, there it is. There it is. Right, 4,500. Uh, if we go here with loading wall, um, that was quite good with the extension grid. No, we want the, we want the loading wall on there, but we also want used. And that's uh, options there. New is $2,000. Used knocks 2000 off. So with the loading wall of 150 that's 4650 So at the moment, we've got to choose between having the, um, the winch or having that one. So we're going to go with the winch first. Then we'll get that one and we'll see about selling some wood chips. The wood chips at the moment, what do they sell for now in hard mode? Um, $181 per thousand. So we're going to get about $500. No, it's, yeah, about $500, I think. Maybe $600 for each load that we can pick up. We'll have to see. So there we go. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.